Hey, this is Gail Polubiak, CEO and founder of Interview Academy. Grab a pen and paper because before our webinar on Friday, I want to show you a five-step formula that's working really well for job seekers when they're networking so that you can get more referrals to help you get hired faster and easier. I'll wait while you grab a pen and paper. Now imagine this scenario. What if every time you attended a networking function, everyone you spoke with hung on to every word and they wanted to become your greatest advocate? And what if you felt more confident instead of feeling like you were panhandling for jobs? And what if you were suddenly in demand because people were actively referring you? Does that sound crazy? Yeah, I know. I used to feel the same way. I heard all the internet claims about how to network effectively, but no one ever told me anything I didn't know already. So nothing ever changed, and I figured I just hadn't spoken to enough of the right people yet. But then I discovered an incredibly simple networking system that, that gave my job search more traction than I ever imagined. In fact, it worked so well for me and lots of my clients that I thought I had discovered the greatest strategy available to all job hunters. Unfortunately, I did find a few cases where it didn't work as well. Mostly, it was of little use to people who had been completely unsuccessful in their career up to this point, or for people who were looking for jobs well beyond their pay grade. But otherwise, it really can definitely be a game changer for you. What I discovered, I called Networking Game Book. See, I never had a system unless you call throwing spaghetti against the wall a system. I remember every time, though, when I was working, I would have a project. I also had objectives and goals to meet, and I usually developed a plan to accomplish these. Well, for all intents and purposes, being unemployed was being self-employed, and my job, my full-time job, was to find a job. So that, and being a bit of a control freak, I treated this project the same way I did any other project at work. I created a simple plan of action. And here's the deal. As Michael Page said, active networking is vital to career growth. Come on, that's no, hardly a newsflash. All the fuss about resumes, job boards, cover letters, and your social media presence, all of this pales in comparison to how important networking is today. But networking is still one letter away from not working. So using a proven formula will drive the greatest impact in your results. So if you're not getting the results you want, then it probably has nothing to do with how often you're networking. And it also has nothing to do with the type of job you're searching for or how bad the economy is right now, or even for the fact that you might not be that great at small talk at networking events. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your background is or how many people you share it with. It's all about how you do it. And there's a proven formula for doing it right. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Here it is. Step one, the transition statement. Everybody wants to know why you're unemployed or why you're looking for a job. You know what? It's just curiosity. Don't get stuck in here. Don't say anything beyond your job was eliminated. Anything like that, because really that's all they care about. The main thing is be short and sweet. Make it something that you can repeat over and over again and move on. Fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter. Here's the deal. The more you blame the other company or the more you try and justify it, unfortunately, the weaker you look and you become the problem. So make sure this is something you can give a very simple statement to and that no further questions are asked. Just move on. Step two is your value statement. This would be your elevator pitch. This is how you introduce yourself to someone. And the best way to handle this is I help X by doing Y so they can do Z. I know it's very easy to say, I'm a CFO and I'm looking for a CFO job. That is so unmemorable. And this using this template of I help X by doing Y so they can do Z will amplify your results incredibly. Then what you have to do here is You've got to replace the word did with the word do. See, no one really wants to know what you did. What we want to know is what you do. Make it relevant. Even if you're not working right now, 
This is who you are. This is what you do for companies. And then generate six success stories that support that value statement. These aren't things that I want you to consider memorized, but rather that you own. These should be um, explanations that follow the CABS template, challenge, activities, benefit. This structure shows how you're a contributor. Talk about the challenge the company had, the activities that you did, but the benefits the company enjoyed as a result of your contribution. So basically when you're talking to somebody, you're going to say, I help X by doing Y so they can do Z, for instance, and then follow up with one of your success stories that follows the CAB strategy. And that brings me to step three, the resume. Understand that when you bring a resume to a networking event, you pretty much have to be very clear in the type of position that you're looking for. This is what they're going to be using. So you've got to use a resume that clearly defines what you're looking for and how you're qualified for that role. You also want it to be unique. I know so many of the different outplacement companies and different resume writing services can give you fancy, flowery looking resumes. Unfortunately, if I put them out on a desk, I can't tell who it belongs to. It could belong to everybody in the room because it's so generic. What I tell people is you need a partner. You need somebody, not a good friend, and certainly not your spouse. You need somebody who can give you an honest appraisal of your resume. Give it to somebody and have them look at it and see if they get it and ask them what you do, what you're looking for, and how you're qualified. Test it. The other issue is understand that resumes are scanned, never read. Always work at the top of the fold. Fold your resume in half or in thirds and look at that top section. If it doesn't grab someone's attention right off the bat, then you're wasting real estate. Nobody's going to look at it any further. Certainly your friends might look at it and, and get all excited about it, but if they pass it on to someone else, if it doesn't handle this litmus test, it will get deleted. And absolutely without fail, quantify your results. Look at your resume and circle every number that you have in your resume. Make sure that you've got at least six numbers that you can have in your resume. Make these so that it pops because that's what we look for when we scan resumes. And then step four are targets. When you go to a networking event, prepare ahead of time. Look for target companies that you want to work for and take that list with you. But then more importantly, understand that people hire people. So use LinkedIn, use Reference USA, use any of the other directories and figure out who the people are that you would want to reach out to. Take that list with you. This is money because when you talk to somebody at a networking event or when you're sitting down with them for coffee and talking through, and now you've got a list and you can say, here are some of my target companies and contacts. Do you know anybody? Now you're putting something tangible in front of their face. Now the last step is contact information. This is about business cards. How mundane. I can't even believe that I'm actually having this conversation with you. Clearly you've been in the market a long time. You understand yet I can't believe how many people have given me crappy business cards. You, you can't clutter it up with clip art. Just a simple, clean layout with your name, cell phone number, and your email address is fine. That's more than adequate. I say cell phone number because it really needs to be your own personal phone number. This is where people screw up. They put their home phone number down. You don't know who's gonna answer that phone. If you have kids, I don't care how much you coach them, they're gonna be chewing on some burrito when they answer the phone. And we all have families and that's okay. But trust me, 
it is better to keep that initial contact as clean as possible. The other thing is I'm amazed at how many people must go to Kinko's or Office Max and they get the cheapest quality paper money can buy. And you don't want to go to the absolute heaviest stock because that looks like overkill too, but just go to Vistaprint upsell a little bit for better stock and the other aspect of it is your email address just use an easy email address I'm use, I'm showing here you have Steve Adams at Gmail is better than Steve 135122 at Gmail that's just too easy to make typos S Adams versus and I will tell you this is an honest to goodness email address somebody said well this is my personal email address and they never even gave it a thought would you hire golf buddy Steve at gmail.com? So, and here's one, Steve1952. What do you think 1952 is referencing? Yeah, his birth date. Probably not what you want to put. And you don't want to have a shared email address either because people don't know what they can or cannot share and they would probably re prefer not to risk it so they won't send you anything. So if it's to the Adams family, well, that's on many different levels. Would you not do that? And please, email addresses, do not use Hotmail or AOL. They both say you are not current. AOL is old as the hills. I don't care if it's what you're used to. Got to move up and become current. And Hotmail, that's the old cheap freebie. And Gmail's free too, but there, it's, it's certainly more current. So stay away from e email addresses that are Hotmail or AOL and make a simple format. So doing this system right, you're going to get more referrals, more confidence, you're going to build true advocates, get stronger endorsements, and ultimately you're going to get hired faster. So can't wait to see you on the webinar and I'll talk to you on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.